back to my channel. I'm Dr. Purple. I work here in the UK. I do videos for international students and international medical graduates who are transitioning to study or work in the UK. Today, specifically, I'm going to be talking about easy, practicable steps on how to pass the PLAB 1 exam at first sitting. We're drawing from personal experience how I practice for only three weeks to pass the PLAB 1 exams and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So sit back, relax and enjoy it. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel, hit on that subscribe button and also tap on the bell notification so you'll be the first to know when there is a new video. Now So the PLAB exams, which is the Professional Linguistics Assessment Board exams, is the, one of the routes to come into the UK to practice as a doctor. There are other routes, uh, there is the Medical Training Initiative, there is the uh, membership of the Royal College route where you can take the MRCP or MRC depending on your specialty of interest and you can get registration with the GMC which is the General Medical Council of the UK and you can get a license to practice as a doctor in the UK. I've done a couple of videos in the past about that. That's the what I'm talking about today. Basically there are two steps, PLAB 1 and PLAB 2. So PLAB 1 is the multiple choice question based exam pattern. It's actually written in paper form, uh, about 200 questions in three hours. So you can understand how very quick and fast paced it is. It's like a race against time if you get what I mean. Things about the PLAB exams. PLAB in general can only be taken when you are a doctor. So unlike the US MLE where you can see take some of the steps whilst being in medical school. But PLAB 1 is taken quarterly in the UK, uh, mostly quarterly in the UK and about twice abroad. If you check on the GMC website, you will see the countries that are eligible to conduct PLAB exams. So in terms of difficulty, the PLAB 1 exam is set at the level where a normal house officer could pass or a foundation year 2 doctor in the UK. What score do you need to pass? It's variable. It depends on uh, the bell distribution. You have to check on the general performance of the cohort of people who took the exam at a particular setting, uh, check who falls under the two standard deviation and decide on what mark benchmark to use for uh, to assess like the standard of pass. But however, it's usually between 138, 142 over 200 so that means you're looking at probably 62 64 65 percent for you to pass PLAB 1. The curriculum for PLAB covers a whole range of subjects so basically it includes your biomedical sciences your pre-medical sciences your clinical sciences so you're talking about anatomy physiology biochemistry um opson gynae psychiatry medicine every damn thing that you've done in medical school so that's what it covers so you can understand how enormous how wide this is so that's why you need proper information on how to study for this exam because i mean you can't start going to study all those things to pass this exam i mean we have, you haven't got that time at all <laughs> so how do you prepare for the PLAB exams Preparation for PLAB exams depends on how in touch you are with clinical information and knowledge. So if you're fresh out of medical school or you've been doing your uh, training abroad, you've been studying, uh, it won't be so much of a difficulty for you. But if you have left medical school for, for such a long time and you haven't really been into clinical uh, practice, so you probably will need extra study to be able to sit for this exam comfortably. You need about three weeks to six months to practice for PLAB, <laughs> depending on your individual circumstances, like I've already mentioned. If you are a fast learner, if you got all the time, if you are in tune with clinical medicine and practice, 
three weeks or one month is good enough for you to study and pass the plab so i did plab in three weeks time so i did plab at a time when i was doing my master's so i finished my dissertation i had enough times so i was on holidays i was literally studying for 10 to 12 hours every day how do you do that three practical steps on how to go about preparing for the plab one exams one identifying what materials you need to study number two developing a particular study pattern which i'm going to recommend to you in this video number three getting a study buddy study partner or a discussion group with these three methods you can practice for plab one in three weeks pass it at first sitting without any stress so what materials do you need to get the most important thing you need is past questions or question bank and the one i would recommend is the 1700 question i'm sure you've heard of this is the almighty starting point why do you need to get the 1700 questions number one is that it gives you the pattern of the real exams number two is that some of the questions might repeat number three is that it puts you in the right frame of mind to prepare for the exams in terms of how to cover the curriculum or the syllabus number two resource you need is this book oxford handbook of clinical medicine oxford handbook of clinical specialties oxford handbook for foundation year program you don't necessarily need to read these books back to back it is a complete waste of time you might also need to refer to nice guidelines once in a while and patient.co.uk as well for up-to-date information on guidelines on how to manage very very common situations like hypertension like copd like uh, asthma guidelines and all of that that is it for for reference materials in terms of the handbooks i mentioned you only need the handbooks when if you're doing a question and you're not quite familiar with the question like you're always failing that question then you can go to the handbook to study that particular topic very well so that whenever you come across any question on it you're not going to fail it anymore you don't need to go start studying all these books and all that in details you only need them for references all right number two thing is developing a pattern of study and that's where the 21 days plan comes into play which is the three weeks some people can practice for longer time if you haven't got much time like let's say for instance you're actively working there's no way you're going to use three weeks to prepare for plow so using three weeks is if you're not working if you are on holidays and you have all the time you can invest up to 8 10 to 12 hours to study so i did plab when i just finished my master's here in the uk and i had a lot of time on my, it was holidays right i had time to study so i was studying for 10 to 12 hours and how did i do that if you go to the plab group on facebook i'll put description i'll put a link down below in my description box so you can access the 1700 question bank that is the almighty formula for plab exams so you can also access the notes for various academies in manchester and london so these notes are in systems and that's what i use so let's say you have cardiovascular you have uh, musculoskeletal hematology and all of that they are all in the file section of the facebook group i'll also try to put a link down below so you can also access that so how do you utilize this resource so yeah now that you've got your materials how do you study it plab one actually covers about 16 systems in terms of the curriculum and the notes which you will find in the file section of the facebook group i recommended which is compiled already by the various academies in manchester and london so it has about this 16 systems as well so you've got medicine cardiovascular medicine neurology surgery hematology blood gases Gynae, or so what I was doing is um, so in the morning I study a particular system all right so let's say today I'm studying Opson Gynae but I'll try as much as possible to finish that system because I haven't got time to come back to that system anymore because I've got just limited days so if I study that in the morning 
in the afternoon i do the 1700 questions so i try as much as possible to make sure that i do 100 questions which is very possible all right so i do the 100 questions according to the system that i've studied because the 100 the 1700 questions can also be studied system wise if you get what i mean so you can compartmentalize them into surgery gynae musculoskeletal just like that so if i study a particular topic like option gynae today in the morning in the afternoon i make sure that i use that time to do all the questions or at least 100 questions in that system if the system has less than that i will make sure i'll borrow questions from other areas and do 100 questions so you realize that in a day you've done you've studied that topic completely because i mean you may ask how possible is it to study option gain in one day that brings me also to the fact that it's not everything that you need to study the notes has been written in such a way that if you are able to cover the essential parts then you are good for the exams besides you still got your residual knowledge to rely on you know so you do the particular topic you do 100 questions and in the evening you have a time to study with your group so i joined a whatsapp group of so many people all over the world very serious minded people and we were doing 100 questions every day so we were studying like 9 to 11 pm every day for two hours so you realize that in a particular day you've done a system you've done 100 questions on your own and you've come back to do 100 general questions again with a study group that is phenomenal amazing so in two weeks which is 14 days you would have done 14 systems and some of these systems are actually quite small like blood gases and hematology ophthalmology they are quite small so you can do two systems in a day so you realize that in 14 days you would have covered this whole 16 systems all right and you would have done about 1400 or even the whole 1700 questions as well on your own and with the study group you would have done 1400 as well so that means you've gone through the 1700 questions almost twice in two weeks then you have one week left to yourself before the exams all this i'm telling you are actually how i practice for the plan one exams and it worked for me right uh, so the last week for me was to go over gray areas and also to lay my hands on mock exams mock is a very important component of the exams so the last week you try as much as possible to put yourself in the exam condition and start doing the mocks try how you can do 200 questions in three hours after that you score yourself see what you've done most of the mocks actually have answers so you can go over and see what part you did not get well and i will also recommend which is what i did you can register to do the mock exams uh, if you're in the uk london manchester areas where you can do the mocks it's better you register to do the mocks if you're not physically present in a location where they conduct mock you can register online virtually to participate in the mock because if you do the mock i did three mocks i paid about 20 pounds or so for each mock so i did three of them and you know what happens with this mock uh, is that after doing the mock session whoever is in charge will go through all the questions make corrections and do some elaborate teaching on those questions especially the very controversial ones and if you do that if you do a minimum of three mocks you will be so confident to sit for the exams and i mean the first mock i did i, I did not score very well and i was like come on what's going on what's been happening i've been doing 1700 and i was getting above 70 percent so how come this mock i'm getting 64. so but the second one got better and the last mock i got a very good score and one thing about the mocks is that because you are aiming to get about 62 64 65 percent in the final exams if you start getting up to 70 in the mocks then 
the possibility of you passing the real exam is very, very high. You also need to learn how to use clinchers to uh, identify answers to questions. You know, clinchers are just like buzzwords that when you see them in a particular question, it points towards something. You don't even need to understand the topic completely. You don't even need to uh, read everything. So, for instance, if you see so thin young man with shortness of breath most likely you're thinking about pneumothorax if you see sandpaper rash you're thinking of scarlet fever if you see like strawberry service you're thinking of trichomonas vaginalis so these are just uh buzzwords clinchers you know that when you see them your mind is going towards something these are very easy ways to study for plab one i mean you don't need to know everything you don't need to study all the books if you just go through these simple practical steps i tell you you will be smiling on the day of the exam if you need more time to study then by all means take all the time but apply these steps as well take it at your own pace and register for the exam when you are ready and just go take it the final thing i would like to say is that no one prepares for an exam with the mindset of fear and oh, uncertainties i'm not sure if i'm gonna pass or not if that is your mindset then you might as well just keep your money because you're gonna fail if you want to pass an exam if you want to prepare for anything you need to have a positive mindset towards it because success first of all starts from the mindset you know if you have a positive mindset towards anything you're doing most likely <laughs> you will succeed i've been reading a lot about um, scientific and psychological studies on study patterns. I'm gonna put all those knowledge together and do a video. If you're struggling on how to study for exams, the next video I'm gonna do will be very beneficial for you. And if you're a medical student watching this, it's not wrong for you to start now to practice for PLAB. I mean, you got all the time. You can uh, join the Facebook group, the PLAB. I will try to put a link also and just keep yourself acquainted with how the whole process goes and you know so that when it gets to your time it becomes something easy peasy for you send me a message i'm happy to respond to you if you have any questions if there's anything you want me to cover i'm very very happy to do that just you know hit on that like button subscribe to my channel drop a comment follow me on instagram at dr purple that's where i am on a daily basis and i'll see you again in the next video stay blessed cheers